to speak with another dynamic guest this morning, Amy Culver. She has spent the past nine years working and volunteering in East and West Africa. She's the creator of the Brusara Project, which she'll be talking all about this morning. Now, her ties to Key West include being the past owner of Mango's Restaurant and the current co-owner of the store Key West, where the weird go pro. Perfect name for down here. Amy, thank you for being on this morning. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Now, first of all, I have to ask, what does Brusara mean, Amy? Brusara in Swahili means wisdom, knowledge, insight, and understanding. Okay. Um, Swahili is a trading language between Arabic and Africana. Mm -hmm. So they combine a lot of meaning into one word. I like it. Now, yes. I, I am so intrigued by, <laughs> by the Brusara Project, Amy. I've been reading up, 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 up about it. Why did you make that first trip to Africa? Well, I wanted to go to Africa, and uh, my late husband was born in Ethiopia, and he didn't want to go back to Africa, and I didn't want to go on just a regular, you know, tour. Mm -hmm. So I signed up for volunteer letters, mm -hmm. and they were looking for teaching women in business for the first time in East Africa, so I signed up for that. Okay, and it just kind of took off from there. Well, it took off because, you know, what happens in those situations is that you go over there, and they literally, after 48 hours, drop you into your job. You have a job, which is great because, you, you know, you want to be culturally involved. So I got to know um, the Maasai and Ditoga and Hadzabi, and that's how I ended up with Busara. Awesome. And now, Amy, let's talk about all of these trips that you've been taking, and what, what is your ultimate vision? The ultimate vision is right now is to make sure that they get archived, and particularly um, the Hadzabi, there's only 1,500 left. They're the second oldest bloodline in the world, and they'll be gone in four years. So the goal is to really get the American kids educated about them, mm -hmm. because we can Skype them in now, because we left you know, uh, people with computers, so classroom can go to warriors, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. So like a seventh grader can see a warrior of the same age mm -hmm. and talk to them that they're living treasures. Yeah, wh why do you feel that these people are so important? You just said that you feel they're, they're living treasures, and, and why else? Well, you know, particularly Hadzabi, um, they're the biggest conservationist. If they take something out, they put something back. They don't abuse the land whatsoever. Maasai, they're very elegant, nomadic, very smart business people, uh, and great warriors. They're herdsmen, Detogar ag agriculturists. So you have conservationists, agriculturists, and herdsmen. And they all work and live kind of in the same southern quarter of the Serengeti. Now, it seemed like when I was watching some of the videos, Amy, there's a, women. Is yes. it mainly all women over there? Or? No, that's, you know, that's a big focus of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, they are missing a couple generations of men because, you know, due to genocide or killing each other for stealing each other's cows. And we've kind of worked that out a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> so, so they told me after my last <laughs> trip. Um, but the, really the focus is to make sure that the women understand that they can get educated, that they can, you know, get them to market. Some of the, you know, particularly one of the Maasai families, um, they were missing an entire generation of men. And they're not educated and they can't go to market and they don't know how to make money. Mm -hmm. So I go over there and try and help them negotiate in their terms, not in Western terms. So mm -hmm. please make no mistake that uh, they can go to market, they can make some money and put food on their table. What are the living conditions like over there, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> um, Hadzabi d w refuses to sleep under a roof. They use just sticks at night with a fire. Um, Dutoga, both Dutoga and uh, Maasai used cow dung huts. So they mix cow dung with mud and then put it, you see the huts on top of it. And, uh, which is really kind of a problem because they end up with a lot of cataracts because of all the flies inside the hut. So they'll cook inside the hut, so they have a terrible problem with cataracts and blindness after the age of 50. So we're trying to, <laughs> we're trying to work that out. Mm -hmm. Steam Vito, a company that we're working with, has, has given us um, 90 cooking pots that they'll be able to use outside so they won't have to cook inside, so it'll alleviate some of that. Mm -hmm. Now, are these people, when you go over there and they have living conditions mm -hmm. like you just mm -hmm. described, What's their attitude like? Oh, they're great. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, they really don't know any better. They're much happier than most of us. I've got news for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they have their chores. They, you know, they're very happy. They don't know really any differently. Wow. So, you know, they're pleased. And, and actually, if you talk to the Hadzabi, I said, 
you know, there's only 1,500 left. I mean, why don't you marry outside the tribe? And it was kind of a joke with the chief. And he calls himself Obama, by the way, which I think <laughs> is hysterical. Uh, he said that the women outside of his tribe want a roof and fresh water, and, you know, that's too much for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He doesn't even want it. No. He's so he content can't. with what he has. He's content. So that has to be awesome for you then, Amy, to make these trips there. You probably come back with such a different perspective. Too. I don't know who learns more, mm -hmm. you know, me or them. And what I try and do when I'm over there is just live under their conditions. So I sleep in a tent right next to their bomas or their fires and uh, just really do their chores with them, do their daily routines with them, go hunting with them, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, and just kind of, you know, stay with the program. And, and so over the years, they've really trusted me. You're a trooper. I don't know if I could do all, <laughs> <laughs> all of that. Well, it's my game to my gang. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Live in QS and then go to Africa. But, you know, the cultural value is so high mm -hmm. that you really don't care if you're, you know, what you're sleeping or how you're sleeping. I mean, it gets, gets a little daunting after about, I can do about three weeks and then need a couple of days break of a shower, yeah. toilet. <laughs> you know, hey, I understand. You know, good sink. <laughs> <laughs> now, Amy, is there uh, a woman or even a man in particular that has just stood out to you so much oh, over there? There's so many of them. Yeah, you can't name just the, one, um, probably. You know, there's one woman that uh, she, she and her sisters married the same husband, and they do that for, for, to break up the labor and stay close to their families. Mm -hmm. So she and her sister and two cousins um, ended up taking on 18 other kids that were lost in genocide or AIDS. So they have a, they have a troop of 28 kids. Mm -hmm. And these guys get up every day and they laugh all day long. And they're big pranksters, mm -hmm. which is hysterical. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah, and they walk you know, at least five or six miles to the watering hole. Mm -hmm. Their kids will take the cows for 20 miles. And that's just their day. Wow. What a life. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick okay. break right now. We're going to talk more about the Brasara Project okay. when we return and how people can get involved if they'd Brilliant. like. Brilliant. Stay with us.